I am apparently crazy because I ran this by 50 people today and nobody agreed with me. Kind of makes me like it a little bit more, but it shouldn't. Um, I actually think this is like an awesome opportunity to buy Cincinnati to do like 50 different things this year because nobody wants them because everybody hates them and nobody wants them. And the prices are hilarious, like on them to do stuff. This is a team that three weeks ago was projected to win the most games this season. Everyone is playing. They're one and two. And it's all like, well, he's hurt. I don't know what the hell is going on with Burrow. Maybe he's 80%, maybe he's 40. And nobody knows, by the way. And nobody knows what it's going to look like on Sunday, too, by the way. And we can, like, run through schedule, which is really interesting, and how I think this can shake out in a really advantageous way for Cincinnati. I I am interpreting this. I don't have to be right. I am interpreting this as, like, an incredible opportunity to buy Cincinnati things. Um, so I literally moved the market on them to make the playoffs today because they won last night and books made them less likely to make the playoffs than they were four days ago. They were minus 110 to make it before they won. He played. He didn't aggravate the injury. They won. They were even money to make it today. Can someone explain that to me? Like, does that make any sense to anybody? Like, yeah, the Chargers won and these other teams won and the Bengals won and he played and he's going to play next week. That's so much better than it was four days ago. Like, that's the, um, an insanely rosier outlook than four days ago. And the price got worse. Like, they became less likely to make it. And uh, and I completely disagreed with that and bet a ton of money on them to make the playoffs. Uh, I also think, and this is also insane, I actually think Burrow is alive to win MVP now. Because there's an incredible narrative if he ends up. Oh, this, babe! Oh, and yes, they end up there is. A lot of games. So, like, and I think Jamar Chase is alive to an offensive player of the year. So, like, all of these things I think are now possible. And yeah, they could play Tennessee. He gets hit the wrong. Well, they sack. How many times they sack him in the divisional game, Nick? That we bet two years Nine. ago. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Nine. But who's counting? <laughs> But, who's, but, who, but who remembers? Who remembers these things? Who, who, they, who, they who among us times? cares about such things? Who, who among us cares? Who would ever remember historically atrocious CLV losses in the NFL playoffs like that? Um, he could get hit nine times again. He could not finish the game. This entire thing evaporates. But like, until that happens, I'm going to bet on a, like a potentially legendary player to do good stuff. Like, that's who, that's who I'm going to bet on. And you can bet on... Deshaun Watson and Matt Canada and Kenny Pickett and Mac Jones and Belichick and all these other guys. And I'll take this guy and I'll take this guy at, at even money, minus 105, minus 110 to be one of the best seven at the end of the year when there are 14 games left. We're going to be playing games past Christmas and their team's already being given like 50 50 shot. It's a, I think it's kind of crazy when you get the opportunity to buy like historically good players in great in like situations. You should always do that instead of bet like the team that's off to a good start that like doesn't have any of those guys. Like I always think we were talking in, in, in I think one of the commercial breaks about the preseason NBA poll, like the Boston Celtics are predicted to win the NBA championship. Be like the ceiling for the Boston Celtics is never to win the NBA championship. Their ceiling is to be very good, but like there are there is a legendary player of some kind that will win the NBA title this year. Like that will happen just like it happened last year. And you just got to pick which one. But I think it'd be Boston. And so if you're going to bet in the NFL and bet on who wins the Super Bowl, like look at the teams that have won. It doesn't have to be like a legendary quarterback, although those win all the time. But like, I mean, a really, really top end high ceiling team wins all the time. And like, there aren't many of those. And this is one of them. And you get them at a way reduced price versus all the other ones that everybody already thinks is really good. So just, yeah, like you get to buy LeBron on an average Cavs team. Like you get to, and maybe you think I'm overselling Burrow. Like he plays in the same era as Mahomes. Otherwise, I think we'd think about him like that. So just like I think you have the chance to bet on that kind of guy in this kind of situation, and it doesn't have to work for me to be right or for me to think it's a good bet. But just like I, I think you should be looking for opportunities to buy those kind of players, and uh, and I think we have one. In the uh, in the the two years that like they've actually really gone head to head, it's it's one one in AFC Championship games. Also, like Burrow got him once in his place. Like maybe at they should have gotten place. him last year. At, and maybe should have beaten them and, again at their place last and had the regular year season in the AFC though. Championship game. Right. Uh, yeah, they yeah. won. They won the last couple. Also, Cincinnati has the Chiefs did obviously win the championship game last year en route to a Super Bowl. Steichen and Gannon, you know, the offensive and defensive coordinator for Philly under Nick Sirianni, now head coaches respectively at Indianapolis and Arizona, both look like they're they're pretty pretty good at the jobs. It's early. But they both look like they're pretty good. And there were questions on the Eagles' new offensive coordinator, Brian Johnson, and the defensive coordinator, Sean Desai, through a couple weeks. I, I think the Eagles answered some questions on Monday night. 
I don't know if we're like fully there, like a period at the end of the sentence where it's like this team is definitely like at least close to what it was last year when the Eagles were obviously a regular season juggernaut and almost won the Super Bowl, right? But I think they they went a little bit of a way towards answering those questions by like bludgeoning a team that they were clearly better than. And I'm not saying Washington is on the same level as Tampa. I think the commanders are, are better than Tampa. And this is more of an Eagles conversation for me anywhere, anyway, Ken, where I was a little iffy on are the Eagles going to be in the elite tier? Obviously, they're a good team. But were they going to be in that elite tier? I still don't know if I'm ready to put them there in pen. But I think I'm putting them back there in pencil after the performance last night and out to a 3-0 and start this season. What Thoughts on just like the Eagles after last night overall? Yeah, it's a great point. And I think it's going to be something that's an interest. I still think it's going to be an interesting talking point with the Eagles as we get down the road. Because like, look, there's, there's just so much talent on the roster still that I, I honestly think, like, I, I guess, like if you put Matt Eberflus in charge of the team, I'm not sure they would do particularly well or something like that. But like, or had Todd Bowles be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if they'd do well, but like to a certain extent, the talent is so insane. Like what are you gonna do? like? All right, we have like four Pro Bowl D linemen and we drafted another one. Like what are you gonna tell them? Uh, rush the passer. Okay, coach, we got it. Like great, great game plan. Like hit Baker Mayfield, make him really uncomfortable. Um, just there's so much talent. I do think they're gonna roll over some teams. Sometimes I think we're going to see that the rest of the season. I think we saw it a lot last year with the good coaches too. I mean, they were the crazy thing is like we did the Stike and Gannon thing yesterday. The other thing this it really emphasizes to me is just how close last year's team was to being like a historic all time kind of like a like a best ten, best twenty team ever kind of a team. They lose to Washington with everybody healthy, obviously, and with a rematch of of this game, obviously, it's coming up this weekend, and. It, like, that was man, a weird Monday night game, right? Where, they like, dropped the, six and, touchdowns. Quez Watkins fumbled wrong, going in. And they, and yeah, they barely like just, lost still. Yeah. Barely lost. Hurts doesn't get injured. They might go 16 and one. And like, I mean, they run into, they have a lead on Mahomes in the Super Bowl. I mean, really, like, you're a knife edge away from, like, you're one of the best 10 teams of all time, maybe. And like, that's, that's also what that emphasizes just how special, like, the collection of coaches and players. Also, I had the under at the start of the year on that team. Just this isn't, you know, this isn't me saying, I'm t- trying to take credit for saying the Eagles were going to be really good. I was actually on the opposite side before the year started. Um, the thing that'll be really interesting with them, and we just won't know for a really, really long time, where coaching is going to show up big time. And this isn't, I don't need to be a coach to know this. Like, it's pretty obvious, right? Especially like Steichen uh, not being there anymore. Where is this going to show up big time? Third down, fourth down, and red zone. And decision making. And that's where it's going to show up really big. And they can maul teams like Tampa. And it won't matter that much. But like, I st- I swear to God, you still see some of these high leverage plays. And you just go, what? Like, what is that? Like, what are you doing? And not even like to Hertz, just like, what is this? Like, this doesn't, this is so much less efficient than it was last year. And like the Hertz fourth and short stuff is always going to work. Like you, you think you need a new offensive coordinator to draw that one up. You just run the same thing last year. It's going to work again. But like everything else ran that like read option on fourth and two because they couldn't quite like do the push. That got stuffed by Tampa Bay. They went one for five in the red zone yesterday. Just like. Look, that's not gonna. You're gonna maul Baker Mayfield, DeAndre Swift's gonna run for nine million yards. That's not gonna matter. It doesn't matter. Get in the Super Bowl against one of five teams on the opposite side. It's gonna matter a ton. You're gonna get out coached by all those guys. You are playing the Niners in the NFC Championship. You might get out coached this time. Well, like, who who's knows? playing quarterback? Well, who's playing quarterback for the Niners? It's like, but, well, like, yeah, like well, one armed, like, one armed Josh Johnson. <laughs> like, let's yeah, let's sorry. see, let's see what happens. And uh, Christian I mean, McCaffrey obviously, in like, the Wildcat. Uh, would be a fascinating narrative if the Niners like, you know, got the rematch at their place and it went different because their quarterback played the whole game. I think we can all see that playing out for sure. So look like the Eagles are awesome. They're going to win a ton of games. They're going to make the playoffs. They're probably going to at least win a playoff game minimum. And they're going to get into a really high leverage game against another really good team at some point. And I I actually think they're going to get totally burned in that spot by the coordinators. I actually really do. And I I think that's where you're going to need a really good game plan. And I still don't think even last night, notwithstanding, I just don't think we have any evidence yet that that what that exists that that skill exists for them and uh and i don't think we're gonna know necessarily but i'm gonna bet on it not existing in a big spot and that's gonna be months and months from now so that's not like a handicapping them the rest of the season conversation win total awards any of that stuff but like you get late in the postseason i i don't want that team and i'm gonna want other teams against them 
a pleasure to be talking college football with the voice of college football on CBS, the great Brad Nessler. Brad is on Twitter at Brad underscore Nessler CBS. Brad, I want to just stick with the uh, the Big Ten teams for a second here and talk about the three quarterbacks that you mentioned. In the Heisman Trophy market, um, it's Caleb Williams from USC and Michael Penix Jr. from Washington are the two co-favorites um, right now. Drew Aller, a little bit farther down the board at 40 to 1, and then McCarthy and McCord, the Michigan and Ohio State quarterback respectively at 35 to 1. So they're what that means is like they are not thought to be like the favorites right now to win the Heisman Trophy. D- do you like one more than the other to rack up like incredible stats over the rest of the year? Do you prefer one? I know you said you think McCarthy's the best one. Do you think that translates in terms of the statistics? Any of those names stand out to you as far as Heisman Trophy is concerned this year? No, probably not. Um, I'd be more apt to say that one of the Ohio State receivers will end up above those guys, um, or one of the Michigan tailbacks will end up in front of those guys. But I don't think those teams are built for worrying about, um, you know, 400-yard games and five touchdowns and all that stuff that, um, you know, USC and and, uh, and Washington are doing with Penix and, and the defending Heisman guy. Uh, but I think they're built to win the, the rings, the natties, the championship maybe as much if not more than anybody else. So, I don't know. I look at it differently. I don't vote for the Heisman until um, the December 3rd or 4th or whenever the SEC championship game's over. So, I'm one of those guys that waits and, and waits and waits and waits and waits, and, and I don't get an early thing in there. Sometimes, you know, by midseason, I look at guys and go, holy cow, their numbers are unbelievable. I don't think any of those guys' numbers are going to be close to what, you know, Williams or Penix or um, some of those guys are going to put up. So, from a number standpoint, I wouldn't bet on any of them being a Heisman winner, but I would I would think that any of them are capable of winning a national championship, which is more important if you ask me. Just whoever the next person I bet on to win this, watch out. Jalen Milrow got benched and Marvin Harrison Jr. got hurt. Yikes. Um, look, I, I think the what's the market doing? It's uh, reacting to the performances the players are having. Penix plays great. Caleb plays great. Um, the players that have the most touchdowns are being rated the best. Just like something to keep in mind, and this will be true when we do NFL awards on Thursday, College football isn't obviously as long of a season as the NFL is. Uh, every team plays 12 games as opposed to 17. But like the idea that there can't be crazy stuff late in games when games matter, um, you only literally have to go back to last season to find a situation where we thought we thought like we had the, the Heisman figured out and then we completely didn't, right? Hendon Hooker gets hurt, but more importantly, CJ Stroud's a huge favorite. Caleb Williams is 20 to one with like three games to play and ends up still winning the award. So just because like guys are getting out to leads, and this is true in the NFL markets as well, just because guys are getting out to leads and the market is figuring out like what teams are good and who and who's not good, and it's starting to get priced this way, there's still a ton of room for really rapid price movement as we get towards the end of the season in almost half the NFL award markets, maybe two thirds of them, this happened last season. So like, hang out in the Heisman market. Yeah, Caleb and Penix are really good. They have crazy stats. Now the games really start mattering. Now conference play, now maybe upsets. Just like, I think you're still keeping your options open. I wouldn't chase Penix. I wouldn't chase Caleb. I would chill out. And I think maybe we get a great opportunity in about a month. 